In our last segment, we covered the number of diamonds on a pool table generically. Going to the length of the table, there were nine diamonds and eight segments. And going to the width of the table, there were five diamonds and four segments. So we have that two to one relationship, which is critical to the study of the diamond system, which is a multitude of systems. There are literally hundreds of systems all over the world. And I'm going to be covering probably between 20 and 30 of them for you over the next several months. If you look here on the table, we have an interesting situation. We have a uh, Q's lane, which represent the concept of triangles on a pool table. If you look on this one corner, we have a very small triangle. This rail comes down here like this, this cushion, and meets this cushion coming down like this. And this is what's called the hypotenuse on that line. Now, it's not important that you know that name. I kind of refer it to as the hippopotamus. But bottom line is we call it the hypotenuse, according to Pythagoras and Euclid and those type of mathematicians. And, and so we have a very small triangle here called a right triangle. There's a right triangle created in the corner. And if you look over here to the, this other side, we have a longer Q stick with a bigger triangle. So what we have is we have a small triangle inside of a big triangle. Now the key is how did we get that? When you're using systems, you would calculate a diamond on one rail to a diamond on another rail. You would lay your stick down on that line, and then you would move over what we call a parallel shift. If the Q-stick moves over like this, parallel, you now have the small triangle inside the big triangle. But the key is, is in the movement of the parallel shift. Now, if you move over to this side, we have two lines that are what is called parallel to each other, and everybody knows what parallel is. Roads are parallel on the sides. Uh, there are many things in life are parallel. And if you look at these two lines parallel to each other going into this cushion, this angle is a right triangle and this angle is a right triangle and they're equal. Now, the beauty of that is, is that because they're equal, if you shot a ball into this rail, it would come straight back out and in this rail it would come straight back out. If I move these over at an angle like this, they're also parallel and this angle right here is less than 90 degrees. That's called an acute angle, which I like to call an acute angle because it's a pretty little angle. And then when you look at this one, it's also an acute angle, and these two angles are equal because the two lines are parallel. So you don't have to have any math background at all to know what parallel lines are and to know that if they're all along a straight surface, these angles are equal. So reversing back over to the original situation, we have the small triangle, the big triangle, and we have an angle created in this corner, and when we move parallel, we have the same angle over here. So keep in mind that when you do an initial calculation of a diamond segment, from one point to another, you are basically taking a, an angle and you're shifting over, called the parallel shift, to keep the angle the same. Then you shoot down that line and you either hit the ball, make it, or play defense or safety of some sort. So that's basically kind of a, a groundwork of parallel lines, triangles, according to Pythagoras, uh, Euclid, and all the mathematicians years ago that didn't really play pool and they gave it to us to use for the benefit of your game according to Dr. Q. You don't have to play like a pro to enjoy the game I love. If you've ever played in a friend's basement, you can compete in an APA league. In the APA, everyone can play and anyone can win. So if you're looking for a fun night out with your friends and family, join an APA pool league today. Have fun, meet people, play pool. Visit poolplayers.com today.